Welcome back Acura Bike Project fans. We left off the last video with fabricating that new headrest and also the vibration isolation mounts for the engine, and then picking up these awesome two CX Turbo bikes. The frame extension changed the angle of the backrest in the position of the engine slightly, and thus the position and shape of these main side rails. So next I would go ahead and fabricate new versions of these. I started out by removing the old ones. This was done before I built that new frame jig. I removed those old vibration isolation mounts from the side rails, along with other parts that would be upgraded or changed, and cleaned the whole thing up. All this grinding made me improvise this grinding station really quick with three angle grinders that each have different discs hanging on bent shelving brackets that fit nicely in between the shield and body. And also this fresh air bleeder valve that I can put on my belt and connect to my compressed air line. The soft latex tube fits under the goggles and keeps them from fogging up. Getting back to those side rails, the upper part has quite an angle to it now, which meets an existing square tube at an angle and at an edge. I cut these on the bandsaw and then cut the notches into the ends that would help them fit, finishing the cut with a hacksaw and a mini belt sander. I jigged up these pieces on the welding table and went ahead and welded them. Okay, here's the right side vertical rail. Finished up now. I just need to blend it. Goes right at these lines here. These had to be extended to make them taller to fit the frame extension. That clamps right in there. And that fits pretty nicely. All right, looking good. Let's do the left side. All right. Look at that. Oops, too far. Look at that. Very nice. All of these extra bars are used to clamp things rigidly in place during this layout and fit testing. Eventually the frame jig will have posts that clamp each frame piece in place. That's basically all the parts of the frame extension. But before welding anything, I want to make sure the engine will fit okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the empty engine case that I bought in the frame. And, of course, it did not fit, but hey, that's why we do it this way. Okay, we're making a little more progress on the mounting of the vibration isolation assemblies and these vertical side rails here. So these are the vibration isolation mounts, these round pieces with the rubber inserts. These are the vertical side rails. So you can see I'm adding the posts here to clamp them in place. Um, one problem I did encounter was that the original vertical side rail piece came up here and interfered. It hit with uh, the valve cover. So I'm working on fabricating a new one. I was just uh, laying it up here with some cardboard. Um, this was my first try. I, I liked it at first, but uh, I think I'm gonna redo it because you can see the angle I chose here, it actually gets narrower toward the front and there's a lot of room here so I want to close this gap up a little bit and make that a shallower angle uh, so I'll try to do that now but the issue I faced with these vertical side rails originally they were in line with the inside edge of the frame here uh, I was worried that they didn't wouldn't give enough room for the exhaust assembly to come out and swing down um, they actually interfered with these bolts that are sticking out just on this left head this one, of course, is a little further forward than the right because of the offset in the crankshaft between the connecting rods between the two pistons. Um, but it interfered with it on this side. Um, so first of all, it, the valve cover interferes with the vertical post, but also it looked pretty likely that the exhaust downpipe was going to interfere with this too. So initially I moved the whole thing out an inch in the design and made it an inch taller and an inch um, lower as well which would probably require the refabrication of the whole rail on both sides. 
Um, but now I'm experimenting with just moving it out a half inch. You can see I have a half inch spacer down here clamped in and then the vertical rail clamped to the edge of the half inch spacer. And I have the same thing done on the other side at the top and the bottom. Of course, on the other side of the top, I did not have to modify the vertical side rail, but on this side I do, so I don't have it clamped up here yet. Um, but I'm liking how the half inch, the extra half inch looks. It doesn't stick out too far. Um, I can add a little angle at the bottom and blend it in. I think it looks pretty nice. I did it up in the design. It looks pretty good. Um, so I think I'm going to move forward with that, but I'm not going to weld anything until um, I get much further along in fixturing everything up and fit testing everything. I did another cardboard layout and played around with it until I liked the way it looked. I think I like that. It's much closer here, but plenty of room still. Good half inch, three quarters of an inch. Okay, here is the first one. See, it's much higher in the front here. Or I can flip it around. Here is the second one. I like the new one more. Yep, definitely like that one more. Okay. I cut and ground the component parts of this last piece of the side rail and put them together for a quick fit test in the frame. Looking at it from the rear left side gives a better view of the clearance involved. I think this should be enough for the engine vibrations. It looked good, so I went ahead and welded the new extensions up and also welded those vibration mounts and then put it all back into the frame and attached it to the engine. I did the same for the left side vertical side rail and it also fit quite well. I also tested the fit of the side rails against the rebuilt engine with the exhaust installed in the test stand. Okay, let's check out this, hot, this frame rail for mounting the engine. I want to make sure it looks like it's going to fit okay here. So, uh, the exhaust will come out over it. This should be able to actually just rotate out. There we go. Aha. Look at that. Very nice. Fits really well. There's even room outside of this mounting point for the exhaust downpipe. That's pretty cool. Getting exciting. Laying the two side rails on the table, you can clearly see the difference in the upper angles on these pieces. I also did some updates to the model for rendering, exploring the final coloring and detail that more accurately represents what the phase one prototype will probably look like. And I'm really thrilled with the way it's looking hinting of its inspiration, but also having its own unique identity. Let me know what you think in the comments. I also want again to sincerely thank my patrons who helped make this project possible. Thank you all of you for your continued support. I deeply appreciate it. I'll leave you with another quick look at that rendering. See you soon.